tend the tale of Sweeney Todd. His skin was pale and his eye was odd. He shaved the faces of gentlemen who never thereafter were heard of again. He trod a path that few have trod, the Sweeney Todd. The demon Barbara Fleet Street. He kept a shop in London town. With fancy clients and good renown. And what if none of their souls were saved? They weren't to their maker impeccably shaved. My Sweeney, my Sweeney Todd. The demon Barbara Fleet Street. Here we go our separate ways. Farewell, Anthony. I shall not soon forget the good ship Bountiful, nor the young man who saved my life. There's no cause to thank me, sir. It would have been a poor Christian indeed who spotted you pitching and tossing on that raft and not given the alarm. There's many a Christian too who would have done just that and not lost a wink's sleep for it either. I'm 
Ale o mafia, ale o jeg jeg, ale o belt or the bush Wouldn't you like to push me parsley? It looks to me, do you like you've got plenty there to push? Must you glare at me, woman? Off with you! Off, I say! Then how would you like to split me mouth, Mr. Wilgo Jack? Off, I said! To the devil with you! Pardon me, sir, but there's no need to fear the likes of her. She's just some half-crazed beggar woman. London's full of them. I beg your indulgence, boy, but my mind is far from easy. For in these once familiar streets, I feel the chill of ghostly shadows everywhere. Forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. Farewell, Anthony. Mr. Todd, before we part... What is it? I have honored my promise never to question you. Whatever brought you to that sorry shipwreck is your affair. And yet, in these many weeks of the voyage home, I have come to think of you as a friend. And if you need help in London... or money... No! There's a hole in the world like a great black pit, and the vermin of the world inhabit it, and its morals aren't worth what a pig could spit, and it goes by the name of London. At the top of the hole sit the privileged few, making mock of the vermin in the lower zoo, turning beauty into filth and greed. I, too, have sailed the world and seen its wonders. For the cruelty of man is as wondrous as Peru, but there's no place like London. There was a barber and his wife, and she was beautiful. A foolish barber and his wife, she was his reason and his life, and she was beautiful, and she was virtuous, and he was naive. Another man who saw that she was beautiful, a pious vulture of the law, who with the gesture of his claw removed the barber from his plate. Then there was nothing but to wait, and she would fall so soft, so young, so lost, and oh, so beautiful. Lady, sir, did she succumb? Oh, that was many years ago. I doubt if anyone would know. Now leave me, Anthony, I beg of you. For there's something I must do, something I must find out. Now and alone. But surely we will meet before I'm off to Plymouth. If you want, you may very well find me around Fleet Street. I wouldn't wander. Well, until then, Mr. Todd. There's a hole in the world like a great black pit, and its wars aren't worth what a pig could spit, and the vermin of the world inhabit it. Can she sit? Sit you down, sit. All I meant is that I haven't seen a customer for weeks. Did you come here for a pie, sir? Do forgive me if me head's a little vague. Ugh. What 
is that you would think we'd had the plague From the way that people keep avoiding No, you don't! Heaven knows it try, so yeah. But there's no one comes and even to inhale Right you are, so what you like a drop of ale Mind you, I can hardly blame them These are probably the worst pies in London I know why nobody cares to take them I should know I'll make them But good, no, the worst pies in London Even that's for like the worst pies in London If you doubt it, take a bite Is that just disgusting? You have to concede it It's nothing but crusting Here, drink this, you'll need Wonder with the price of meat, what it is when you get it. Mm, never thought I'd live to see the day. Man, I think it's such a treat. Finding poor animals, what a dying in the street. Mrs. Mooney has a pie shop, does a business, but I noticed something weird. Lately, all her neighbors' cats have disappeared. After and a tour, what a cause. Enterprise, puppet pussies, enterprise. I wouldn't do in my shop. Just thought if it's enough to make you sick And I'm telling you then pussy cuts is quick No denying times is hard, sir Even harder than the worst pies in London Only lot and nothing more Is that just revolting or greasy and gritty? It looks like it's molting and tastes like Well, a pity Times is hard. Oh, go on, dear. Spit out, dear. On the floor. There's worse things than that down there. That's me, boy. Isn't that a room up there over the shop? If times are so hard, why don't you rent that out? It should bring in something. Up there? Oh, no. No one will go near it. People think it's haunted. You see, something happened up there. Something not very nice. There was a barber and his wife, and he was beautiful. A proper artist with a knife. But they transported him for life, and he was beautiful. Barker, his name was Benjamin Barker. Transported, you say. What was his crime? Foolishness. He had this wife, you see. Pretty little thing, silly little nit. Had her chance for the world on a string. Poor thing. Poor One her like mad, one of them a judge, one of them his beadle. Every day they nudge and they tweedle. Still she wouldn't budge from her needle. Too bad, pure thing. So they merely shift the poor polite off south, they did. Leaving her with nothing but grief and a year old kid. Did she use her head even then? Oh no, God forbid. But there was a worse yet to come. Poor thing. Joanna, that was the baby's name. Pretty little Joanna. Well, go on. My, you do like a good story now, don't you? Well, the beetle calls on her arm, polite. Poor thing, poor thing. The judge, he tells her, is all contrite. He blames himself for her dreadful polite. She must come straight to his house tonight. Poor thing, poor thing. Of course, 
course, when, course, when she goes there, poor dear, poor thing, they're having this ball all in masks. There's no one she knows there, poor dear, poor thing, she wanders tormented and drinks, poor thing, the judge has repented, she thinks, poor thing, oh, where is Judge Turpin, she asks. She wasn't no match for such craft, you see And everyone thought it so true They figured she had to be daft, you see So all of them stood there and laughed, you see Oh, so mercy on her. So it is you, Benjamin Barker. Not Barker, not Barker. Todd, now, Sweeney Todd. Where is she? So changed. Good God, what did they do to you down there in bloody Australia or wherever? Where is my wife? Where is Lucy? She poisoned herself. Arsenic from the apothecary on the corner. I tried to stop her, but she wouldn't listen to me. And my daughter? Joanna? He's got her. He? Judge Turpin? Even he had a conscience tucked away, I suppose. Adopted her like his own. Some would say it was good luck for her. Almost. Fifteen years sweating in a living hell on a trumped-up charge. Fifteen years dreaming that one day I might come home to a loving wife and child. Let them quake in their boots. Judge Turpin and the Beetle. For their hour has come. Yeah. You're going to get them? You, a bleeding little nobody of a runaway convict, don't make me laugh. You'll never get his eye and mightiness, nor the beetle neither. Not in a million years. You got any money? Listen to me, you got any money? No, no money. Well, then how are you going to live? I'll if live. If I have to sweat in the sewer or in the plague hospital, I'll live and I'll have them. Oh, you poor thing. You poor thing. Wait. It don't have to be the sewers of the plague hospital. When they came for the little girl, I hid him. I thought, who knows? Maybe the poor silly blight will be back again someday and need him. Oh, cracked in the head, wasn't I? Times as bad as they are. I could have got five, maybe ten quid for him any day. See? You can be a barber again. My, them handles chase silver, ain't they? Silver? Yes. These are my friends. See how they glisten. See this one shine. How he smiles in the light. My friend, my faith. Oh, my friend. 
hand. Never you Soon I'll time. unfold you. You can move in Soon here, you'll Mr. Know splendors you, you never have dreamed, dreamed all your days. days. Precious. Beheld its wand 
waters from the pearls of Spain to the rubies of Tibet, but not even in London have I seen such a Favor me, favor me with your glance. Ah, miss, what do you, what do you see off there in those trees? Oh, won't you give, won't you give me a chance? Who would sail to Spain for all its wonders? When in Kenny's Lane lies the greatest wonder yet. Ah, miss, look at you, look at you, pale and ivory skin. Oh, Look at you looking so sad, so queer. Promise not to retreat to the darkness back of your window. Not till you, not till you look down here. Look at me. Look at me. One moment, Mother. Perhaps you know whose house this is. That? Ah, uh, that's the great Judge Turpin's house, that is. And the young lady who resides there? Uh-huh. That's Joanna, his pretty little ward. But don't you go trespassing there, young man. Not if you value your hide. Temper there, it's a good whipping for you. Or any other youth with mischief on his mind. <laughs> hey, hoy, sailor boy, looking pretty chipper. Makes the date I'll be a mate, and you can be my skipper. Off, ah, off I say, ah, off! Ah, ah, ah. Which one sings the sweetest? All's the same, sir. Six pence and cheap at that price. He sings bravely. But why does he batter his wings so wildly against the bars? We blind him. That's what we always does. We blind him, and not knowing night from day, he sings and sings without stopping. Pretty creatures. Have pleasure of the birds, sir. I feel... face again on this or any other neighbor's street shall rue the day that you were born. Is that plain enough speaking for you? But sir, I swear I had nothing in my heart but the most respectful... Dispose of him! You heard his worship. But friend, I have no fright with you. Get the gist of it, friend. Next time, it'll be your neck. Joanna, if I were to think that you encouraged that young rogue... Oh, father... I hope always to be obedient to your commands. Dear child, how sweet you look in that light muslin gown.
Cutter, barber, tooth puller, and to his royal majesty, the king of Naples. The Italian, all the rage he is. Not for long. Oh, Mr. T, you really think you can do it? By tomorrow, they'll flock after me like sheep to be shorn. Oh, no. The beetle, beetle Bamford. So much the better. But what if he recognizes you? Hadn't we better... I will do what I have set out to do, woman. Oops. Sorry, dear. I'm sure. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Do you wake every morning in shame and despair to discover your pillow is covered with hair? What ought not to be there? Well, ladies and gentlemen, from now on you can waken with ease. You may never again have a worry or care. I will show you a miracle, marvelous, rare. Gentlemen, you are about to see something what rose from the dead on the top of my head. Pirelli's miracle elixir That's what did the trick, sir True, sir, true Was it quick, sir Did it in a tick, sir Just like an elixir ought to do How about a bottle, mister? Only costs a penny guaranteed Go ahead and type, sir Go ahead, sir, harder, harder Does Pirelli stimulate the growth, sir? can have my oats, sir, tis unique. Rub a minute, stimulate and in it. Soon you'll have to thin it once a week. Penny buys a bottle, guaranteed. Penny buys a bottle, How about a sample? Have you ever smelled a cleaner? That's enough, sir, magic. Yes, my Pirelli's miracle elixir. Anything what slicks sir, soon sprouts curls. Dry Pirelli's when they see how thick, sir. You can have your pick, sir, of the girls. How about a bottle, what missus? Is what is this? Penny for a bottle. Like, have you ever smelled a cleaner smell? How about a sample? How about a sample, mister? Hey. Have you smelled that bottle? I don't want to eat this. Never mind that madman, sir. Never mind that madman. Where is this Pirelli? Yes, sir. Activate your roots, sir. Keep of your boots, sir. Eat right. Go on, get Pirelli. Yes, get Pirelli's. Use a bottle of it. Ladies seem to love it. But I do, too. <laughs> Pirelli's miracle elixir, grow a little wixer, then some fuzz. The Pirelli's sure to make it thick, sir, like a good elixir, always does. Trust Pirelli's, if your hair is sick, sir, fix it in an elixir, don't look grim. Trust Pirelli's miracle elixir, that'll do the trick, sir. What about the money? If you got a kick, sir. What about the money? Where's the Pirelli? Don't get Pirelli. Just tell it to the mixer of the miracle elixir. If you got a kick, sir. Talk to him. The Pirelli, the king of the barbers, the barber of kings, a bunch of no good day. 
I blow you a kiss. And I, the so famous pretty, I wish you to know who has the nerve to say my elixir is peace. Who says it is? I do. I'm Mr. Sweeney Todd, and I have opened a bottle of this Pirelli's elixir, and I say to you that it is nothing but an errant fraud, concocted of piss and ink. He's right. Hmm, but it'll throw your money down the sewers. Ladies and gentlemen, pay no attention to that madman. Now, who'll be first for a and magnificent... And furthermore, I have serviced no kings, yet I wager that I can shave a cheek with ten times more dexterity than any street mountbank. You see these razors? The finest in England. I put them up against five pounds. You are no match for me. You hear me, sir? Either accept my challenge or reveal yourself a sham. These are indeed fine razors. Instruments like these once seen cannot be soon forgotten. You wager these against five pounds, sir? I do. You see this foolish man. Watch and see how he will regret his folly. Five pounds it is. Boy, bring the vases, bring the towels. Friends, neighbors, Sweet. who's ready for a shave? Me, Mr. Todd. Bring a chair, oh. bring a chair. Will Beetle Bamford be the judge? Glad as always to oblige my friends and neighbors. Ready? Hmm. Ready. Ready. The fastest, smoothest shave is the winner. Now, signorini, signori, we mix at the ladder, but first you gather around. Signorini, signori, you looking a man who had the glory to shave and a pop, Mr. Sweeney. Whoever I beg your pardon, I'll probably say it was only a cardinal mop. It wasn't a pop. To shave the face, to pull the tooth, requires the grace. And not a debrot. For if you slip, you nick the skin, you clip the chin, you rip the lip a bit, and that's the truth. To shave the face, or even a part, without it a smart, required a heart to take an art. I show you a chart, I study a starting in my youth. To cut the hair, to trim the beard, to make her a bristle, clean like a whistle. This is from early infancy, the town give to me by God. It take her a skill, it take her a brains, it take her a will to take her a pain. It take a uh, pace, it take a uh, grace. The winner is Todd. Smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> uh, sir, I bow to a skill far defter than my own. The five pounds. Here, sir. And may the good Lord smile upon you until we meet again. Come, boy. Signore, a blessing, my signorina. Buongiorno, buongiorno a tutti. Who'd have thought it, dear? You pulled it off. Mr. Todd, sir, do you have an establishment of your own? He certainly does. Sweeney Todd's tonsorial parlor above my meat pie shop on Fleet Street. Mr. Todd. Strange, sir, but it seems your face is known to me. Huh, him? That's a laugh. Him being my uncle's cousin just arrived from Birmingham yesterday. <laughs> and already I've heard of Beetle Bamford spoken of of great respect. Well, sir, I try my best for my neighbors. In uh, Fleet Street, above your pie shop, ma'am? That's it, sir. Then, Mr. Todd, you will surely see me there before the week is out. And I guarantee you, Beetle Bamford, the closest shave you'll ever know. He potted in Sweeney pants Like a perfect machine he planned Burbing the hook Baiting the trap Setting, setting it up for the beetle to snap Smiley courted him Sweeney did Said a sort of a scene he did 
laying the trail. Showing the traces, letting it lead to higher places. Laying the trail, showing the traces, letting it lead to higher places. Laying the trail, showing the traces, letting it lead to higher places. hanging around my establishment. Not just a penny, dear, or a pie. One of those pies that gives the stomach crab staff the neighborhood. Oh, off with you! You're gonna kick on your rump and make your teeth chatter. Uh, suck up, thing. You and your fanciers. It's not much of a chair, but it'll do till you get your fancy new one. It was me poor Albert's chair. Sat in it all day long, he did. After his leg gave out from the dropsy. <laughs> Kind of bare, isn't it? I never did like a bare room. Oh well, we'll get some nice little knickknacks. When will the beetle come? Before the week is out, that's what he said. And who says the week's out yet? It's only Tuesday. Easy now. Hush, love, hush. I keep telling you what's your rush. Keep your thoughts nice and lush. Wait. Hush, love, hush. Think it through. Once it bubbles, then what's to do? Watch it close. Let it brew. Wait. I've been thinking flowers, maybe daisies, to brighten up the room. Don't you think some flowers, pretty daisies, might relieve the gloom? Ah, oh, wait, love, wait. And the judge, when will I get him? Can't you think of nothing else? Always brooding away on your wrongs, what happened heaven knows how many years ago? Slow, love, slow, time so fast. Now goes quickly, see, now is past. Soon will come, soon will last. Wait. Don't you know, silly man, half the fun is to plan the plan. All good things come to those who can wait. Gilly flowers, maybe, instead of daisies. I don't know, though. What do you think? Yes. Gilly flowers, I'd say. Nothing like a nice bowl of gillies. Anthony. Mr. Todd, I've paced Fleet Street a dozen times with no success. But now the sign, it business already? Yes. I congratulate you, and uh... Mrs. Lovett, sir. <laughs> a pleasure, ma'am. Mm. Oh, Mr. Todd, I have so much to tell you. I have found the fairest and most loving maid that any man could dream of. Yet, there are problems. She is a guardian so tyrannical that she is kept shut up from human eye. Yet, this morning, this key fell from a shuttered window. The surest sign that Joanna loves me. Joanna? Th That's her name, ma'am, and Turpin that of the abominable parent. A judge, it seems, but as I said, a monstrous tyrant. Oh, Mr. Todd, when the judge has gone off to court, I'll slip into the house and plead with her to fly with me tonight. Yet, when I have her, what can I bring her till I have hired a coach to speed us home to Plymouth? Oh, Mr. Todd, if I could lodge her here for just an hour or two. Bring her, dear. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. I have your consent, Mr. Todd. The girl may come. I shall be grateful for this to the grave. Now I must hurry, for surely the judge is off to the old bailey. Thank you, and a thousand blessings on you both. Joanna, who'd have thought it's like fate, isn't it? You'll have, a, you'll have her before the day is out. For a few hours before he carries her off to the other end of England? Oh, that sailor. Let him bring her here, and then, since you're so hot for a little... <clears throat> that's the throat to slit. 
Oh, Mr. T will make a lovely home for her, you and me, the poor thing. All those years and not a scrap of motherly affection. I'll soon change that, I will, for if ever there was a maternal heart, it's mine. Uh, good morning, Mr. Todd. And you, Bellissima Signorina. Well, how do you do? Signor, I'm sure. A little business with Mr. Todd, Signora. Perhaps if you give the permission? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll just pop on down to me pies. Oh, Lox, look at it now. Doesn't look like it's had a kind word since half past never. What would you say to a nice, juicy meat pie? Your teeth are strong, I hope. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> then come with me, now. Mr. Todd. Signor Pirelli. Ah. Call me Danny. Daniel Higgins the name when it's not professional. Not much, but I imagine you'll pretty it up a bit. Oh, I'd uh, like me five quid back, if you don't mind. Why? They'll hold me over till your customers start coming. Then it's half your profits you'll hand over to me every week on a Friday. Shan shall like. All right, Mr. Benjamin Barker? Why do you call me that? You don't remember me. But why should you? Just a down and out Irish lad you hired for a couple of weeks, sweeping up hair and such like. But I remember these. And you, Benjamin Barker, later transported to Botany Bay for life. So, Mr. Todd, is it a deal? Would you run down the street for me, Paul, be to Bomford? You think are you smart? You foolish a boy. Tomorrow you start in my employ. You understand? You like my plan. Pirelli, I did what you said. I reminded you of the tailor, sir. Oh, he ain't here. Signor Pirelli has been called away. Well, where'd he go? He didn't say you better run after him. Oh, no, sir. Knowing him, so, without orders to the contrary, I'd best wait for him here. So, Mrs. Lovett gave you a nice meat pie, did she, my lad? Oh, yes, sir. She's a real kind lady. One whole pie. Whole pie, eh? And if I know a growing boy, there's still room for one more. I'd say, sir, an aching void. Then why don't you go downstairs and wait for your master there? There'll be another pie in it for you, I'm sure. And tell Mrs. Lovett to give you a nice tot of gin. Gin? Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. You're a Christian indeed. were quick, his fingers strong. It stung a little, but not for long. And those who thought him a simple god were soon reconsidering onto the sod, consigned there with a friendly prod. From Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. See your This is the fourth time, sir, that you've been brought before this bench. Though it is my earnest wish ever to temper justice with mercy, your persistent dedication to a life of crime is such an abomination before God and man that I have no alternative but to sentence you to hang by the neck until you are dead. Court adjourned. It is perhaps remiss of me to close the court so early, but the stench of those miserable wretches at the bar was so offensive to my nostrils, and I feared my eagerness for fresher air might well impair the soundness of my judgment. 
Well, sir, the adjournment is fortunate for me, sir, for us today we celebrate my sweet little Annie's birthday, and to have a father back so soon to hug and kiss her will be her crowning joy on such a happy day. Oh, it is a happy moment for me, too. Walk home with me, for I have news for you. In order to shield her from the evils of this world, I have decided to marry Joanna next Monday. Ah, oh, sir, happy news indeed. Strange. When I offered myself to her, she showed a certain... reluctance. But that's natural enough in a young girl. Now that she has had time for reflection, I'm sure she'll greet my proposal in a more sensible frame of mind. He means to marry me Monday. What shall I do? I'd rather I die. I have a plan. I'll swallow poison on Sunday. That's what I'll do. I'll get some I have a plan. Oh, dear, is that a noise? A I think you're not a, a noise. Plan. Could it be? He's in court. He's in court today. Still, that was a noise. Wasn't that a noise? You must have heard that. Kiss me. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. If he should marry me Monday, what shall I do? I'll die of We grief. fly tonight. Tis Friday, virtually Sunday. What can we do with time so We free? fly tonight. Behind the curtain quick. Tonight. I think you heard a click. Tonight. It was a gate, it's a gate. We don't have a gate. Okay, it was a wave, it was a not a click. You must have heard that. Kiss me. Tonight. Kiss me. You mean tonight. The plan is made. Oh, sir. So kiss me. I feel all right. It's hard to pray sir, tonight. I feel all right. Marry on Monday, that's what you'll do. And gladly, Saint sir, Dunstan's new. I knew I'd be with you one day, even not knowing who you are. Oh, Miss Mary, you Mary, never come, Mary, that you've been called away, that you've been killed, have the plague, or endeavor shall trip. My horse gone to Miss sea again, and rest it by the kiss me. Of course. Kiss me. You're sure. Kiss me. I shall. Kiss me. Oh, sir. Yes, yes, but surely the respect that she owes me as a guardian should be enough to kindle a more tender emotion. Excuse me, my lord, may I request my lord permission, my lord, to speak? Forgive me if I suggest, my lord, you're looking less than your best, my lord, there's powder upon your vest, my lord, and stubble upon your cheek. And ladies, my lord, are weak. Perhaps if she greets me cordially upon my return, I shall grant her a small gift. Ladies in their sensitivities, my lord, have a fragile sensibility. When a girl's emergent, probably it's urgent, you defer to her gentility, my lord. Personal disorder cannot be ignored. Given their genteel proclivities Meaning no offense, it happens they resent it Ladies in their sensitivities, my lord Stubble, you say? Uh, perhaps I am a little over hasty with my morning ablutions Fret not, though, my lord, I know a place, my lord, a barber, my lord, of skill. The sound with the shaven face, my lord, some eau de cologne to brace, my lord, and must to enhance the chase, my lord, he'll dazzle the girl until... Until? She bows to your every will. That may well be so. Well, sir, here we are. I bid you a good day. Good day. And where is this miraculous barber? In Fleet Street, sir. Perhaps you may be right. Take me to him. The name is Todd. We best not wait until Sir, I concur in full these It is, it's right, but we best be married on Sunday. Saturday, sir, would also do. Oh, dear, is that a noise? I think you heard a noise. Like oh, never mind. Something in the street. No, mind. It's a noise. I'm going to get the street. We'll go to Paris on Monday. What shall I wear? With you beside me on Sunday, what will I care that things I have? I'll take my reticule, 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 I'll take my Anthony Sunday, that's 
No, ma'am. I daren't budge till he calls for me. I'll just pop up and see what Mr. Todd says. <laughs> oh, me poor knees is not what they was, dear. <sighs> How long before the Italian gets back? He won't be back. Oh. Oh, no. No, no, Mr. T, you didn't. What? Killing a man? What done you no harm? And with the boy downstairs. You recognize me from the old days. He tried to blackmail me half my earnings forever. Oh, that's a completely different matter. Good. For a moment there, I really thought you lost your marbles. Um, oh, goodness. Uh-uh. Mm. <gasps> oh, all that blood. Mm -mm. That's enough to make it come all over goose flesh, ain't it? <sighs> oh, three quid. <laughs> Waste not what none, as I always say. Now, dear, we have got to use the old noggin. And there you are, sir, above the pie shop, sir. I see. You may leave me now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, first there's the lad. Send him up here. Him too. Now, now, surely one's enough for today. You shouldn't indulge yourself, you know. And, and let me see. He's half seas over already with the gin. Providence is kind. Who is it? Judge Turpin. The judge? It can't be. Quick, leave me. What are you going to do? Leave me, I said. What? Don't worry, dear. I'm out. Uh -oh. Excuse me, your lordship. Mr. Todd. At your service, sir. An honor to receive your patronage, sir. These premises are hardly prepossessing. And yet, the beadle tells me you're the most accomplished of all the barbers in the city. That is gracious of him, sir. Please excuse the modesty of my establishment. For it is only a few days ago I set up quarters here. And a few necessaries are yet to come. Uh, sit, sir, sit. And what may I do for you, sir? A stylish trimming of the hair, a soothing skin massage? You see, sir, a man infatuate with love, her ardent and eager slave. So fetch the fur maiden, pumice stone, and lend me a more seductive tone, a sprinkling, perhaps, of fringe cologne. But first, sir, I think a shave. The closest I ever gave. Bum 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 so loved and still inspire the blood of our hardly higher. What more? What more can, can men require, require than love, sir? More than love, sir. What, sir? Women. Ah, yes, women. Pretty women.
your purpose. Patience, enjoy it. Revenge can't be taken in Make haste, haste and if we wed, you'll be commended, sir. My lord. And who may it be said is your intended, sir? My ward. And pretty as a rosebud. Pretty as her mother. What? What's that? Oh, nothing, sir, nothing. May we proceed? Yes. Pretty women, fascinating, sipping coffee, dancing. Pretty women are a wonder. Pretty women. Something in them cheers the air. Ah, pretty women, silhouetted, say within you, glancing, stay forever, breathing lightly. Pretty women, pretty, pretty women. women. Whether watching how they make a man sing Proof of heaven as you're living Pretty women, sir, pretty women All the pretty women, sir, pretty women Pretty women Joanna marries me Sunday Everything's set, we fly tonight You! Judge Turpin! There is indeed a higher power to warn me thus in time. Joanna elope with you? Well, I'll lock her up in some obscure retreat and whether you nor any other vile creature shall ever lay eyes on her again. And as for you, Barbara, it is all too clear what company you keep. Service them well who hold their custom, for you'll have none of mine! Mr. Todd. Out. I say, out! Oh, this running and shouting, dear, what is it now? I had him, and then... They, they said about sinners, all the running down the street, and all the fat to the fire before. I had his sword was there beneath my hand. There, there, dear, don't... I had his sword was there, and he'll never come again. Easy now, hush, love, hush. Yes. Why did I wait? You told me to wait, now he'll never come again. There's a hole in the world like a great black pit, and its walls aren't worth what a pig could spit, and the vermin of the world inhabit it. But not for long. They all deserve to die. Tell you why, Mrs. Lovett, tell you why. Because in all of the whole human race, Mrs. Lovett, there are two kinds of men and only two. There's the one saying put in his proper place, and the one with his foot in the other one's face. Look at me, Mrs. Lovett, look at you. No, we all deserve to die. Even you, Mrs. Lovett, even I. Because the lives of the wicked should be made brief For the rest of us, death will be a relief We all deserve to die And I'll never see Joanna No, I'll never hug my girl to me Finished! All right, you sir, how about a shave? Come and visit! Your good friend, Sweeney. You, sir, too, sir, welcome to the grave. I will have vengeance. I will have salvation. Who, sir? You, 
producer? No one in the chair? Come on, come on! Sweeney's waiting. I want you bleeders! You, sir, anybody, gentlemen, now don't be shy. Not one man, no, not ten men, not a hundred can assuage me. I will have you. <laughs> and I will get him back even as he gloats. In the meantime, I'll practice on this honorable throat and my loot. Lies in ashes, and I'll never see my girl again. But the work waits. I'm alive at last, and I'm full of joy. That's all very well, dear. But what matters now is him. Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Get control of yourself. What are we going to do with him? And there's the boy downstairs. Better sure have a good look. Make sure he's still there. When I left him, he was half season already with the chain. No problem there. He's still sleeping. And I can fob him off with some story. Easy. But, but the Italian. What are we going to do with him? Later on, when it's dark, we'll go to some secret place and bury him. I guess we could do that. I don't suppose any relatives are gonna come poking around looking for him. You know me, bright ideas just pop into me head. And I can't help but think, seems a downright shame. Shame? Seems an awful waste. Such a nice plump frame, what his name has. Had, has, nor it can't be traced. Business needs a lift, debts to be erased. Think of it as thrift, as a gift, if you get my drift. No. Seems an awful waste. I mean, with the price of meat, what it is when you get it. If you get it, ha! <laughs> Good, you got it. Take, for instance, Mrs. Mooney and her pie shop. Business never better using only pussy cats and toast. Now a pussy's good for maybe six or seven at the most. And I'm sure they can't compare as far as taste. Mrs. Lovett, what a charming notion, well, eminently practical and yet appropriate as always. Mrs. It's Lovett, how I live without you all these years, I'll never know Think how to drag the ball. Also undetectable, how choice, how rare, for what's the sound of the world out there? What, Mr. Todd, what, Mr. Todd, what is the sound? Those crunching noises pervading the air. Yes, Mr. Todd, yes, Mr. Todd, yes, all around. It's man devouring man, my dear. And who are we to deny it in here? Mrs. Lovett, these are desperate times, and desperate measures are called for. Here we are, hot from the oven. What is that? It's priest. Have a little priest. Is it any good? Sir, it's too good, at least. Then again, they don't commit sins of the flesh, so it's pretty fresh. Awful lot of fat. Only where it's sat. Haven't you got poet or something like that? No, you see, the trouble with poet is how do you know it's deceased? Try the priest. Heavenly. <laughs> oh, not as hearty as bishop, but not as bland as curate either. And good for business always leaves you wanting more. Trouble is, we only get it in on Sundays. <laughs> Lawyers are rather nice. If it's for a price. Order something else, though, to follow, since no one should swallow it twice. Anything that's lean. Well, then, if you're British and a loyal, you might enjoy Royal Marine. Anyway, it's clean, though, of course, it tastes of wherever it's been. 
is that squire on the fire? Mercy, no, sir, look closer, you'll notice it's grosser. Looks thicker, more like thicker. No, it has to be grosser, it's green. <laughs> the history of the world, my love. Save a lot of graves, do a lot of relatives' favors. Is those below serving those up above? Everybody shaves, so there should be plenty of flavor. How gratifying for once to know that above those above will serve, serve those, those down, down below. <laughs> now let's see, we've got Tinker. No, something Tinker. Taylor. Something paler. Potter. Something hotter. Butler. Something subtler. Locksmith. <laughs> Lovely bit of clock. Maybe for a lark. <laughs> well then in the sweep, if you want it cheap, if you like it dark, try the financier. Peak of his career. That looks pretty rank. Well he drank, though it's bank cashier. Never really sold, maybe it was old. Have you any beetle? Next week, so I'm told. Beetle isn't bad till you smell it and notice how well it's been greased. Stick to priest. Now, this may be a bit stringy, but then of course it's fiddle player. That isn't fiddle player, it's piccolo player. How can you tell? It's piping hot. Then blow on it first. The history of the world, my sweet. Oh, Mr. Todd, oh, Mr. Todd, what does it tell? It's who gets eaten and who gets to eat. And Mr. Todd, too, Mr. Todd, who gets to sell? But fortunately, it's all so clear that everybody goes down well with beer. Marine does not appeal to you. How about Rear Admiral? No, too salty. I prefer General. With or without its privates. With is extra. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's Bob, finest in the shop. And we have some shepherds pie peppered with actual shepherds on top. <laughs> and I've just begun. Here's the politician so oily. It's served with a doily, not one. Put it on a bun, <laughs> for you never know if it's going to run. <laughs> try it, Friar, try it, try it. See, the clergy is really too coarse and too mean. Yes, but always arrives over time. <laughs> I'll come again when you have judge on the menu. Wait, true, we don't have judge, but what'd you set up for the next best thing? What's that? Executioner! <laughs> Charity towards the world, my pet. Yes, yes, I know, my love. We'll take the customers that we can get. High born and low, my love. We'll not discriminate great from small. No, we'll serve anyone, meaning anyone, and to anyone at all. ambrosial smell. Yes, they are, I can tell. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that aroma enriching the breeze is the 
ain't nothing compared to its succulent source As the gourmets among you will tell you, of course Ladies and gentlemen, you can imagine the rapture in store Just inside of this door There your sample, Mrs. Lovett's meat pies Savory and sweet pies, as you'll see You who eats pies, Mrs. Lovett's meat pies Conjure up the treat pies used to be Over here, boy, how about some ham? Right away Can we have some service, waiter? What about that pie, boy? Ladies and gentlemen Tell me are they tender? Coming, excuse me Right, Mum. Quick, now. Nice to see you, dearie. How have you been keeping? Call me Bones is weary. Toby went for the gentleman here. The bird he's cheeping helps to keep it cheery. Toby, throw the old woman out. God bless good. What's your pleasure, dearie? No, we don't cut slices. Call me eyes is bleary. Toby, none for the gentleman. I can up me prices. I'm a little leery. Business couldn't be better though. God, that's good. Knock on wood. Excuse me. Dear, see to the customers. I'll yeah, set I love quick, though the trade is brisk. But it's six o'clock. So it's six o'clock. It was due to arrive at a quarter to five, now it's six o'clock. And it's already down the block, it'll be here today. I've been waiting all day. And it should have been here by now. Now, boys, will you wait? You'll come back when it comes. Because my customers truly are getting unruly. And what's your pleasure, dearie? Oops, I beg your pardon. Just me hands is smeary. Toby, run for the gentleman. Don't you love a garden? Always makes me teary. Must be one of them foreigners. Good, that's good. That is delicious. Oh, that's my secret. Frankly, dear, forgive me. Can't a family secret. All to do with herbs. Things like being careful with your coriander. That's what makes the gravy grander. More hot pies. Yes, what, love, quick, though the trade is brisk. But it's here. It's where? Coming up the stairs. I'll get rid of this lot, it's so still pretty hot. It's about I'll to be, be open and don't you care? You'll be there what do we have to prepare? Never be sold as a Incidentally, dearie, you know Mrs. Mooney. Sales have been so dreary. Toby, poor thing is penniless. What about that loony? Looking sort of beery. Oh, well, I've got to come up and send that to be dropping sent. That's good. For a king, a wondrous, it's sweet, gorgeous. and most heart-gorgeous You tell me, where is there a seat? Can half compete with this it's particular gorgeous. thing? I have a few minor you adjustments few to minor make adjustments. They'll take, you take your a time moment to the customers. I have another friend is that a pie fit for a king, a wondrous, it's sweet, gorgeous. and most particular it's thing? You see, ma'am, why there is no meat pie can compete with this particular thing. The crust all velvety the and wavy that glaze those crimps and then that quick succulent gravy. One glance of one it's time, it's time, it's time. Excuse me, dear, see to the customers. Yes, what, love, quick, quick no, parts of flutter. When I pound the floor, when you pound the floor, it's a signal to show that I'm ready to go when I pound the floor. When you pound the floor, will you trust me? I just want to be sure when I'm certain that you're in place. I'll pound three times, three times. Three times, if you exactly more hot pies, God. more hot, right. more pies, more wait.
across South and she rolled it. Eat them slow, cause everyone's a prize. Eat them slow, cause that's the lot. And now we sold it. Come again tomorrow. Hold it. Bless my eyes. Right this way, sir. For a surprise. How about is that a pipe for a king? A wondrous sweet and most particular Again, my little love, my sweet Joanna. Joanna. Goodbye, Joanna. You're gone and yet you're mine. I'm fine, Joanna. I'm fine.
And though I'll think of you, I guess, until the day I die. I think I miss you less and less as every day goes by, Joanna. could prevail we'd be the way we were Joanna wake up Joanna another bright red day we learn Joanna to say Joanna? Joanna! Excuse me, sir. Would you mind telling me what house this is? That? That's Mr. Fogg's private asylum. The mentally deranged. A madhouse! I'd keep away from there if I were you. Joanna! Open! Open the door! Now, now, friend. What's all this hollering and shouting? Oh, sir, there has been a monstrous perversion of justice. A young woman as sane as you or I has been incarcerated up there. Is that a fact? Now, what is this young person's name? Joanna. Joanna. I wouldn't by any chance be Judge Turpin's ward. He's the one. He's the devil incarnate who'd done this to her. You watch your tongue. That girl's as mad as the seven seas. I brought her here myself, so hop it. You have no right to order me a No boat. right, eh? You hop it or I'm booking for you for disturbing the peace. Assailing an officer! Get back here! <sighs> That's the sort of scallywag that gets these neighborhoods into disrepute. That makes nine pounds, seven shillings, and four pence this week. Hmm, not bad. And that don't count what I had to pay out for my nice cheery wallpaper. And a real bargain it was, dear, being only partly singed when the chapel burnt down. <laughs> Mr. T, are you listening to me? Of course. Well, then what did I say, eh? There must be a way to the judge. The bloody old judge, always harping on the bloody old judge. Listen, we have got a nice, respectable business now. Money coming in regular, and since we're careful to pick and choose what strangers and I won't be missed, who's going to catch on? Ooh, Mr. Todd, I'm so happy. I could eat you up, I really could. You know what I'd like to do, Mr. Tan. What a dream, if the business stays as good, where I'd really like to go in a year or so. Don't you want to know? Do you really want to know? I've always had a dream, ever since I was a skinny little slip of a thing. And my rich Aunt Nettie used to take me to the seaside, August bank holiday, the pier. Making little castles in the sand Oh, I can still feel me toes Swinging around in the briny By the sea, Mr. Todd That's the life I covered By the sea, Mr. Todd
Now, come on, dear. Give us a kiss. Oh, that was lovely. <laughs> now, Mr. T, you do love me, just, just a little bit, don't you? Of course. Well, then how about it? I mean, of course, it'd have to be a trip down to St. Swithin's to legalize things, but that wouldn't be too painful, would it? I'll make them pay for what they did to Lucy. Now, you listen, it is high time that you forgot all them morbid fancies. Your Lucy's gone, poor thing. It's your Nelly now, here. You know, it's 17 years this Whitson's me poor Albert passed on. I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be married in white, don't you? Mr. Todd! Mr. Todd! Anthony! I found her! You found Joanna! That monster of a judge has locked her away in a madhouse! Where? Where? Where no one can find her, in Mr. Fogg's asylum! Oh, Mr. Todd, she's in those with those screeching, gibbering maniacs! A madhouse. A madhouse! Joanna is as good as rescued. She is? Yes, where do you think all the wig makers of London go to obtain their human hair? Who knows, dear? The morgue wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> the Bedlam. They get their hair from the lunatics at Bedlam. Then you think? Fog's asylum. Why not? For the right amount, they'll shave you the hair off of any madman's head. And the scalp to go with it, too, if requested. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen, I'm out. You will write a letter to this Mr. Fogg offering the highest price for the hair, the exact shade of Joanna's, which I trust you know. Yellow. Not exact enough. I must make you into a credible wig maker, and quickly. Kill a dozen jailers if need be to set her free. Then off with you. But, Anthony, once you have rescued her, bring her back here. I shall guard her while you hire the chase to Plymouth. We'll be with you before the evening's out. Mr. Todd, thank you, friend. Judge Turpin. Most honorable, honorable. I venture thus to write you this urgent note to warn you that the hot blooded young sailor has abducted your ward, Joanna. From the institution where you so wisely confined her. But hoping to earn your favor, I have persuaded the boy to lodge her here tonight at my tonsorial parlor in Fleet Street. If you want her again in your arms, hurry after the night falls. Humble servant, Sweeney Todd. I put the sold-out sign up, ma'am. That's me, boy. Look, dear, a lovely muffler, and guess who it's for? Who, ma'am, for me? Wouldn't you like to know? Oh, you're so good to me. 
You know, when I think about what it was like with Signor Pirelli, it seems like the good Lord sent you for me. Oh, it's just me warm heart, dear. Room enough there for all God's creatures. You know, ma'am, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. If there was a monster or, or an ogre or anything bad like what was after you, I'd tear it apart. With my own bare fists, I would. What a sweet child it is. Or even if it was just a man. A man? Dear? A man what was bad and what might be all unbeknownst into its evil deeds like? What is this? What are you talking about? Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. And why should it? Nothing's gonna harm you, no sir, not while I'm around. What do you mean, a man? Demons are prowling everywhere nowadays. I'll send them howling, I don't care, I've got away. Of course you do, what a sweet child it is. No one's gonna hurt you, no one's gonna dare. I know what Toby deserves. Others may desert you, not to worry, we'll all be there. Um, here dear, have a nice bonbon. Demons will charm you with a smile for a while, but in time, nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. What is this foolishness? What are you talking about? Little things, what I've been thinking and wondering about. It's him, you see. It's, it's Mr. Todd. Oh, I know you fancy him, but, but men ain't like women. They ain't like what you can trust, as I've lived and learned. Not to worry, not to worry, I may not be smart, but I ain't dumb. I can do it, put me to it, show me something I can overcome. Not to worry, Mom. Being close and being clever ain't like being true. I don't need to, I would never hide a thing from you like some. Now, Toby, dear, that's enough foolish chatter. Why don't you just sit nice and quiet for a bit? Here. That's Signor Pirelli's purse. What was that? What's that, dear? That proves it. What I've been thinking, that's his purse. That's silly boy, it's just a something silly, not something Mr. T gave me for my birthday. Mr. Todd gave it to you? Well, how did he get it? How he, did he get it? He bought it, dear, from the pawn shop, dear. Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. Nothing's gonna hurt you, darling, not while I'm around. But you don't understand. It was in Mr. Todd's parlor that the governor disappeared. Boys in their fancies, what will we think of next? Why don't you just sit by your Aunt Nelly like a good boy and, and look at your lovely muffler? How warm it's going to keep you when the days draw in, and it's so becoming on you. Demons will charm you with a smile for a while, but in time, nothing's gonna harm you. you coming to talk to me right now of all moments because as I'm sitting here with my needles, I thought, what a good boy Toby is and so obedient. And why don't you come into the bakehouse with me and, and help me bake your pies? You've always wanted to do that. Oh, yes, ma'am, indeed, ma'am, yes. Well, no time like the present. Whew. 
quite a stink, ain't there? Uh, it's the stairs. They lead down to the old cellars and the whiffs come up, love. And who knows what's down there, so mouldy and dark. And there's always a couple of rats gone home to Jesus. And, oh, so over here is the bake oven. Whew, big enough, aren't they? Hardly big enough to bake all the pies we sell. Only ten dozen at a time. But you must be sure to close the doors properly like this. <laughs> and over here is the grinder. See, this is where you put the meat in. This is where you grind it. And this is where it comes out. And you want to know the secret that makes the meat so sweet and tender? Three times. You must put the meat through the grinder three times. Three times, eh? There you go. Smoothly, smoothly does it. Now, as soon as we get a new batch of meat, we'll put you right to work. Cool. Me making pies all on me own. Where are you going, ma'am? I'll be back in a moment, dear. Smoothly does it now. Smoothly, smoothly. Mrs. Lovett? Mrs. Lovett! Mr. Todd! Mr. Todd! Sweet Polly Plunkett lay in the grass. Turn her eyes heavenward, sighing. I am a lass who, alas, loves a lad who, alas, has a lass in Canterbury. Tis a road to diddle dundee. Tis a road to diddle dundee. Oh, Beetle Bamford! I didn't know you were a music lover, too. Good afternoon, Mrs. Lovett. Mm -hmm. Ma'am. I hope you have a few moments, for I'm here today on official business. Official? That's right, ma'am. You see, there have been complaints. Complaints? About the stink from your bakehouse. They say at night something foul. Health regulations being my duty, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to let me take a look around. At the bakehouse? That's right, ma'am. But it's locked. And I don't have the key. <laughs> it's, it's Mr. Todd upstairs. He's got the key. And he's not here right now. <laughs> And when will he be back? Couldn't say, I'm sure. Well then, I will wait for him here. Ooh. If one bell rings in the Tower of Bray, ding dong, your true love will stay. Ding dong, one bell today in the Tower of Bray, ding dong. What is that? Oh, it's just my boy, the lad that helps me bake the pies. But Shirley's in the bakehouse, isn't he? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. But you see, he's simple in the head, and, and it, look, the last week he ran off and we found him two days later on the shore of the embankment, half starved, poor thing. So now we locks him in there for his own security. Then we'll have to wait for Mr. Todd to come back, won't we? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. But you see, he's gone down to Wapping and won't be back for a few hours. Why, just the other day, oh, he'll be ever so sorry to miss you, because the other day he was telling me, why doesn't Beetle Bamford grace my tonsorial parlor? I would be sure to give him the most stylish haircut, the daintiest of shaves, all for nothing. So why don't you come back another time and take advantage of his wonderful offer? Well, that's back what... already. Look, Mr. Todd, look who's here on some foolish complaint about the bakehouse or something. He wants the key. I don't have it. I told him you had it. But surely there really is no rush. Why don't you let Mr. Todd take you upstairs and, and fix you up all nice and pretty? Well, tell me, Mr. Todd, do you pomade the hair? I dearly love a pomaded head. Pomade? What, well, of course! And a nice facial rub with bay rum, too. All for nothing. Well, sir, I take that rather kindly. I am, sir, entirely at your disposal. Let's just hope he can do it quietly. If not, I'll provide a little musical send-off. So we finally plunk it in the grass. Turn her eyes heavenward, Hey, black as rook. Now that ain't Miss Lovett's hair. Oh well, probably just some old black cow.
Coo, a bit of a fingernail. Clumsy. Ah! No. Oh, no. No, no, Mrs. Lovett! Mrs. Lovett, let me out, Mrs. Lovett! Tis a row, do diddle ho, it's done. Not yet, it isn't. The boy, he's guessed. Guessed what? About Pirelli. When you were gone, I locked him in the bakehouse and he's been yelling to wake the dead. We've got to look after him. But the judge is coming, I've arranged The it. bloody old judge. You worry about the bloody old judge at a time like this. Come on. The engine roar, the motor hissed. And who, how the boot is? Sweeney's got to see that to start the beetle arrived in the beetle sat to satisfy the hungry heart of the sweet heart. The demon of the sweet. Just this way, sir. You do me honor, Mr. Fogg. I agree. It would be to our mutual interest to come to some arrangement to my poor children's hair. Your children? Each of my patients is my children to be corrected when they're naughty and rewarded with a sweetie when they're good. This is a charming yellow, a little dull in tone, perhaps, but you can soon restore it to its natural gleam. Here's a fine texture for a hair of a male. And as you know, there is always a discount on the hair of a male. This one here has the hair of the shade I seek. Oh, poor child, she sings all day and night, leaving the other inmates sleepless. Come, child, smile for the gentleman, and you shall have a sweetie. Now, where shall I cut? Anthony! Joanna! What is this? What is this? Unhand her! Who are you? I... Stop, Mr. Fogg, or I'll fire. Fire and I will stop! I cannot shoot. City on fire, rats in the surface of the lunatics, yelling in the surface of the end of the world, yet stay on fire. Hunchbacks dancing, stories of the ground, and the worrying of giant twins. Watch out! Look! Blowing in the bright lights, great! Black rays, falling on the city on fire. to be afraid of, boy. Not while I'm around. Damn. Toby. The demons are prowling everywhere. Now or days. Toby. Fire rats in the streets and the lunatics yelling at the moon. It's the end of the world. Watch it, she's a wicked one. She'll deceive you with her fancy airs and her fancy gowns and her mischief, mischief, devil's work. Where are you, Beetle? Beetle? In the streets and the lunatics yelling at the moon in the end of the world. Yes, they'll be on fire. The hunchback's dead. The story on fire. The world's gone shy. The wind's gone shy. The wind's gone shy. Mr. Todd, 
Mr. Todd! No one here! Where is this Mr. Todd? No matter. He'll be back in a moment. For I trust him as I trust my right arm. Wait for him here while I get the coach. But they're after us still! What if they trace us here? Anthony! No, you have to let me come with you. There's no safety for you in the streets. But dressed in these sailor clothes, who's to know it is I? No, the risk is too great. Look at me, look at me, miss, oh, look at me, please, oh, favor me, favor me with your glance. Oh, miss, soon we'll be, soon we'll be gone and sailing the seas and happily, happily wed in France. And we'll sail the world and see its wonders. I'll be back before those lips have time to lose that smile. Beetle. Someone calling Beetle! I knew it! My neighbor, Mrs. Lovett. Thank heavens the sailor did not molest her. Thank heavens, too, she has seen the error of her ways. She has? Oh, yes. She speaks only of you. Long for forgiveness. Then she shall have it. She'll be here soon, you say? I think I hear her now. Oh, excellent, my friend. Is that her dainty footstep on the stair? I hear nothing. Yes, isn't that her shadow on the wall? Where? There! Primping, making herself even prettier. Even prettier. Than usual, if possible. Oh, pretty women. Pretty women, yes. Quickly, sir, a splash of bay rum. Sit, sir, sit. Yes. Joanna, Joanna. Pretty women. Hurry, man. Pretty women are a wonder. Again, Barbara. Pretty women. What, what we, we do, do for pretty women? women. Blowing out Blowing their out candles or coming, coming out their hair. They leave. Even when Even they, when they, leave, they leave, leave, they still, they still are there. there. They're, They're there. there. Oh, how seldom it is one meets a fellow spirit. In fellow tastes in women, at least. What? What's that? Oh, sir, no doubt the years have changed me. But I suppose the face of a barber, the face of a prisoner in the dock, is not particularly memorable. Benjamin Barker! Benjamin Barker! Angels. 
Oh, Tobias. I raise her. You! What are you doing here? Uh, I saw the sign and I thought I'd come in and ask for a shave. When? When did you come in? Uh, oh, sir, nothing you saw. No man shall ever see, I promise. A shave, eh? At your service. But, sir... Whatever you may have seen, your cheeks are still much in need as the razor as before. Sit, sir, sit. Does the judge still live? He was crawling, clutching up my skirt, but he's finished now. Leave them to me. Open no, the doors. No, no, no. Open the doors, I No, say. don't touch her! What is the matter with you? It's just some meddling old beggar. Oh, no! Oh, my God! Don't I know you, she said. You knew she lived. From the first moment I walked into your shop, you knew my Lucy lived. I was only thinking of you, a, a crazy hag picking bones at spots of Ali Ashkent. Would you have wanted to know that was all that was left of her? You lied to me. No, no, not lied at all. No, I never lied. Said she took the poison, she did. Never said that she died. Poor thing, she lived. But left her weak in the head. All she for months was just lie there in bed. Should have got to hospital, wound up in bed. Now instead, poor thing. But you should think she was dead. Yes, I lied. You're a bloody wonder, eminently practical and yet appropriate as always. Mrs. Lovett, as we said before, there's no one in dwelling on the past. Do you mean Sis, come here, my love. Sir, I thought was only there's for the best. Here, Baby, my love. God's dead. He's dead. Oh, what's the pound of the world, my pet? Oh, Mr. Todd, oh, Mr. Todd, leave it to me. Is learn forgiveness and try to forget. I oh, see, Mr. Todd will be comfy, cozy with me. Mr. Todd, but this no one knows. And life is falling alive, my dear. So let's keep living it, really living it, really living it. Beautiful, a foolish barber and his wife. She was his reason and his life, and she was beautiful, and she was virtuous, and he was. Be 
Hi, Mr. Todd. It's the old woman. You've harmed her too, have you? You shouldn't, you know. You shouldn't harm nobody. Razor, razor, cut, 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 and watch me grind my corn. Pat him and, and prick him and mark him with a B and put him in the oven for baby and me. <laughs> Attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. His skin was pale and his eye was odd He shaved the faces of gentlemen Who never thereafter were heard of again He trod a path that few have trod Did Sweeney Todd The team and barber of Fleeton Street He kept a shop in London town The fancy clients and go to renown and what if none of the souls were saved? They went to the maker impeccably shaved. My sweetie, my, my sweetie sweet Todd. Todd. The, the demon barber of Fleet Street. Sweeney Todd. He served a dark and a hungry God. He served a dark and a hungry God. To seek revenge may lead to hell. But everyone does it if seldom as well. A Sweeney. A Sweeney Todd. A demon on your feet. 